Hello, 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 and welcome once again to Movies That Pop. I'm the Colonel. Let's see what popped up in theaters this week. This weekend, if you're wondering why the Hot Topic store at your local mall isn't open on time, it's probably because the entire staff has called in sick and can instead be found at a screening of their latest obsession, Crimson Peak. The latest film by the brilliant Guillermo del Toro is a lush, moody, and old-fashioned ghost story which delivers the scares while delighting the eye. Even if it's not the most compelling story, and it is wholly predictable, it does manage to create a sense of awe in every shot and provides more than its fair share of hair-raising chills and thrills. Your goth daughter will love it, and she'll make room for some kind of tribute to this movie on her body right next to her Jack Skellington tattoo. That's it for the capsule review. Let's get in-depth. Any discussion of Crimson Peak must start with its overall aesthetic. This film is a sumptuous beauty from start to finish. The production design, the cinematography, the special effects, here is a movie that creates indelible images in the mind and makes you feel wholly immersed in its world. This film is designed to death, no pun intended, and there is a perverse beauty in each frame, even the ones depicting gruesome acts of bloody violence. It's a gothic romance in the classic sense of the word, hyper stylish to hypnotic effect. Now. This year, Universal Studios Hollywood will be featuring a Crimson Peak maze as part of its Halloween Horror Nights event. And I've gotta say, this is one world that I would love to walk around in and absorb every square inch of its beauty. At least, until the ghosts show up to grab me by the throat. The plot of Crimson Peak, which is definitely not its strong suit, concerns young Edith Cushing, an heiress and aspiring writer who falls for a dashing baronet, played by Tom Hiddleston, and immediately finds herself trapped in a deadly game of cat and mouse when she marries him and moves into the family estate with her new husband and his sister, played by Jessica Chastain, along with a rather large population of terrifying spirits. One issue that may divide audiences is the fact that the film seems to be out of a completely different era. For example, there aren't any real twists in this plot, or at least they're exactly what you'd expect. You know from the very first shot of each of them that Tom Hiddleston and Jessica Chastain are up to no good. You know they will eventually be revealed to have dark secrets and you can more or less guess what they are. The moment Edith, played by Mia Wasikowska, shows up with her new husband at his family estate and it has no roof, so it's snowing inside the house, and due to the red clay deposits in the soil the house is built on and sinking into, blood appears to be coming up from below the surface of the ground. I mean, you don't even have to get to Jessica Chastain's constant dirty looks to Tom Hiddleston to be like, red flag, red flag, red flag, get her out of here. All that lives in this house are shadows and creaks and groans. So you better soothe that boundless imagination of yours. I just need a proper welcome, that's all. From now on, I want this house to contain nothing but friendship and love and warmth. Thomas, your bride is frozen. Of course. Forgive me. Let's go upstairs. Start a fire at once. I'll run you a hot bath. The pipes will run red at first because of the clay. Red flag, red flag, red flag. In fact, I found myself wondering whether this was a movie that was telegraphing its plot twists on purpose or just doing a terrible job at keeping everything a secret. I settled on the former. This movie wants you to know more than poor Edith. It doesn't make her circumstances any less dire if you do know. There's still suspense in her predicament. There's just no real mystery. And any people that decry this film because they quote, figured it out in the first few minutes should be smacked upside the head. Oh, you figured out that there was something shady about the people who live in a place called Crimson Peak with red goo bubbling up from the floor? Oh, well done, Sherlock. Next thing you're gonna do is tell me that you think there might be a little something off about this guy. Brilliant. What else makes Crimson Peak old-fashioned? 
The scares in this movie are a product of the overall mood and tone, something that only a disciplined and confident director like Guillermo del Toro can pull off. In amusement park terms, Crimson Peak is not a roller coaster, but more a walk through haunted house. It's got a slow, deliberate pace, and it takes its time establishing the mood and letting the audience stop to smell the bloody roses at every turn. The litmus test of whether you will love this movie lies in whether or not you have the patience for this old school approach. I find myself enjoying the ride so much that I didn't mind that I knew exactly where the movie was going. And I was just excited to see it get there, especially in the film's exceedingly nutty final reel. The cast of this film are all game and up to the task. They play this material in just the right subtle minor key. Jessica Chastain in particular is very effective at crafting a superior villainess, showing restraint in the earlier scenes and belying her evil tendencies through only the smallest of gestures, but becoming more and more overt until exploding into glorious batty chaos in the film's climax. And yes, Angela, Charlie Hunnam is in it. And no, he's not in it nearly enough. Moment of silence for dreamy Charlie Hunnam. I award Crimson Peak a large bag of popcorn. It comes up way, way short on plot surprises, but in terms of actual enjoyment, the film is a bountiful feast for the senses, an experience so immersive it's a shame they didn't release it in 3D. What were they thinking? You may be tempted to take this haunting tour over and over again, especially if you or your significant other, or both of you, have a habit of wearing black nail polish. You know who you are, and I do too. And this movie is for you. All right, that does it for this edition of Movies That Pop. Don't forget to subscribe so you'll never miss one of our reviews. Click thumbs up if you liked what you saw. Stay tuned for more reviews of all the fall movies as they come up. In the meantime, watch your back and stay out of the basement. I'm the Colonel. Thanks for watching. Bye!